You don't wake up one day as a world-class engineer, so you have to learn this stuff over time and be willing to have the patience and perseverance to learn all this instead of just giving up at your first failure. Oh, it is heavy. Oh, faster than it can. All right, Keith. <laughs> all right, ready? Okay. 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 We are the giant dinosaurs of Brain Center Robotics team from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're here for our day with the Boxy. We're all just a group of friends. We kind of met each other through just a bunch of different ways. And we decided to come together and compete in a robotics league called FTC. And personally, I, I like doing robots just for getting to like see technology in real life and getting hands-on experience. And it's a lot of fun. I'm Gordon Walton and I coach a robotics team of middle school and high schoolers. Um, and uh, as a, for my day job, I work with pharmaceutical companies and their R&D uh, groups. And for fun, I, uh, I help my uh, kids learn about robotics and apply math and science uh, to their various projects. The kids compete in uh, a robotics challenge. There's 7,000 teams uh, worldwide. Yeah, definitely. I think as a team, our goal has always been winning. So for the competition side, we always just try to do our best in what we do. This year, the game involved an enormous number of wiffle balls of different sizes. You had to release them all over the field, collect them, put them into rolling goals. Uh, move the rolling goals around to different places for scoring positions, all while playing both offense and defense. So it was uh, critical to develop a, a robot that had a, a number of different capabilities. It's a social uh, activity and they, uh, they hang out all the time, they go to movies together, they play laser tag together, and they solve hard problems together. It is the shield for our IR sensor so we can do a homing beacon following system. So each year they often have a, uh, a challenge that involves finding an infrared uh, beacon. And we use an infrared sensor like this, which uh, is a nice piece of equipment, but it will basically, it will scan this air, this uh, 180 degree area, and it will tell you plus or minus 30 degrees where you know, the beacon is. And plus or minus 30 degrees is really not super useful for navigation. And so what they wanted to do was develop a hood like this, which they can place in front of the sensor and narrow the aperture of the incoming signal. Being able to take the part from scratch where it didn't exist three days ago, and even in conceptually, and uh, get it designed and then start to manufacture it is really a unique experience for them. It's almost the kind of thing of like individuality. Like there's this idea where I made this thing, this is my creation. And I think there's like a certain pride to that. Like even with just simpler stuff, when you kind of get to make something and create it, and then actually see that in action, or just look at it completed, there's a certain pride from that. And I think also just like being able to take the initiative to go out and turn your dream into a reality and put the work into creating something amazing. And being a maker is like being able to see like a hierarchy of how things go, like from like the top of like what do I want to do, and being able to continue down like a line of like subsystems of well how am I going to do it, why am I doing it, stuff like that, and then taking pride in your work, and but at the same time being able to let go of a project that you know is either that wouldn't work out or something like that. Um, I remember we were all kind of sitting in a room and we watched the Kickstarter page and like the videos on that. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing, but this is never something that I could do. This looks insanely difficult. And then when we get here, it, it was a lot simpler than I expected. And it's a lot of difficult to use machines packed into something that's simple and makes sense. We basically spent all day just using the milling part of it, and it felt like an individual milling device. So, like, all the three types of it are really high quality. It's not like two of them and then they throw in a 3D printer. It's all three like very consistent, very high quality uh, systems that you can use. So for our robotics team, it's really got a lot of application and uh, I can imagine having a lot of application in many areas, but the ability to do three very specific but very different tasks is, uh, is remarkable. We'd make an hour long trek to a, a big workshop 
in order to use you know, the shop bot or a mill or a laser cutter and uh, to have all three of those things in one small package uh, is, really, is really an amazing feat. So we've, we've actually had some experience with 3D printers before and uh, we're one of the early adopters of that. And those are nice, but they're very, very far from being precision machines. And I think when you sit down with Boxy and start to move it on the X and Y axis, uh, you know, you're moving it in tenths of millimeters and it's accurate uh, throughout the entire run of it. That's really remarkable. Whether you're trying to cut a, a round surface like this, whether you're trying to create the same part, 15 times. With the setup on Boxy, the motion is just so smooth and so precise. Another thing that just kind of blew my mind is just, it, imagine, like, the, the, the machines out there that can do this kind of stuff, but they're huge. You can almost never have them in your own home. But you could literally put this on your desk and just work, at, like, from your own home. In engineering, in general, there's a fun, there's also just a fun side of it. Just in general, like, like playing around with Boxy, that was a lot of fun. And like there, it's always cool to be able to go out and see the most newest, latest machine and try playing with them. Oh, okay. So there beautiful. Oh, that's, oh. that's so cool. Let me see. And I think learning new stuff is just a lot of fun. Like today I learned how to mill and it was a great experience. And I got to tour a tech shop. Like just learning stuff every day is a really interesting and fun experience. We were really looking forward to our opportunity to use Boxy today, both to experience the tool and see what it can do, as well as to develop a useful product for the robotics program. And we were really impressed with not only the capabilities of the machine uh, and its ability to do both the milling and the laser cutting and the 3D printing that they're interested in doing, but really the precision of the machine. And you can see as they used it throughout the day, that they went from uh, being kind of timid, not being really sure of themselves or understanding how this works. They made six of these, and by the sixth one, they're just pros. They have no, no trouble doing it independently, and they all want one. Uh, and they would, you know, uh, <laughs> we need to find a way to get them one because they would really uh, be able to use it to, uh, for great things. So.